electric vehicles, renewable energy, cannabis. 2020 was a crazy year for the market. Try to keep up. And welcome to Jason Does Invest In. On this channel, I'm going to highlight some companies that I think make good investments and how I value them. The stock I like to talk about today is Gibraltar Industries, ticker ROCK. Gibraltar Industries is a manufacturer and producer of products and services for the renewable energy, conservation, residential, infrastructure and cannabis markets. According to reports, energy demand is heading for its fastest growth in more than 10 years, with renewable electricity expected to increase by almost 30% in 2021. Now there's currently a wave of companies on the market and this presents a challenge in finding one that is still trading at a fair value, offering reasonable returns. If we look at the renewable energy segment, which focuses on solar mounting systems and operating software, in 2020 it brought in 80% of revenue growth. They have acknowledged that some issues occur due to weather events, supply issues brought in by the pandemic, but they continue to have high customer demand, which has created a backlog of orders valued at $164 million, which is a 51% increase from the year before. The residential segment services the residential remodeling construction markets in North America, including roof and ventilation products, mail and package solutions, solar and rain dispersion products. It has received a 35.6% revenue growth during the last year, and I think that the growth in modern housing construction, the movement to electric vehicles, and a general demand for greener energy to a more climate conscious culture is going to create some interesting market developments in the near future. Although I can see Tesla has been a competitor in this sector due to their innovative designs, their current leading technology and the amount of media attention they currently receive. Now Gibraltar also have an agricultural technology segment and I'll be touching on that later. But before I cover that, I just want to go through the financials of the business. But first, please remember to smash that like button to show some appreciation for the time and effort that goes into these videos. I've been pulling together data on adjusted earnings for the last four years and four quarters, then compiled it into several charts, which show the total revenue, costs, income, cash, debt, and earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. We can see a gradual increase in revenue, which seems to be slightly proportional to cost. Net income seems mostly flat, but given the pandemic, I think this is actually quite positive. You can also see cash has come down as debt has been paid off. Also revenue for 2020 was just over $1 billion, whilst its EBITDA was $129 million, which is a $23 million or 21% increase from 2019. The trade in 12 months shows even further increase. The last four quarters show nice positive figures until quarter four, where there was a dip in revenue, plus a drop in cash and an increase in debt. However, there is a lot more going on here than is shown in the graphs, and this relates to the company's leadership and strategy. The company's CEO, Bill Bosray, joined the company last January. He was previously at Dover Corporation for three years, servicing as president and CEO, and ran an annual revenue of $1.6 billion. Before then, he was at Emerson Electric for 26 years and he worked his way up to Group Vice President and he led global research and innovation, also advanced manufacturing and engineering. Now if we look at the stock charts of these companies, we can see that they've performed very well during his tenure there. He's also been credited for his strong leadership skills and experience driving organic and acquisition growth. Since joining Gibraltar, he's been using a combination of profits, cash on hand and new debt to adopt an aggressive acquisition strategy to enhance their development into their respective industries. The company suggested it would seek an acquisition targets with patents, market leadership and strong management who they would plan to keep in place. Here's a summary of the acquisitions made. What I really like about these is that they were good companies with customers and returns. Plus, by using cash on hand, Gibraltar have been profiting from their purchase immediately. I also like that the company is reinvesting their profits because that increases the value of the business. Plus, by lowering their earnings, they reduce their tax implications. This tells me that Gibraltar have a solid business strategy and seem to have control of the finances. Now if we look again at the quarterly figures, the dip in cash drawn in quarter 4 was actually due to the acquisitions of Sunfig and TerraSmart, so I want to take a look at these two. 
For $3.75 million in cash, they acquired Sunfig, a provider of software solutions that optimizes solar energy investments through upstream design, performance, and financial modeling. The operating software, SIFT, provides advanced customizable solar panel setups and installations so that each project can be tuned to the most efficient setup, then saved and moved to a different project for another speedy setup. Now they report an increase in projected returns of 5 to 15% for utility solar developers that use their SIF software. For $228.2 million, Gibraltar acquired TerraSmart, a provider of ground mount solar racking technology particularly used for solar projects installed in challenging terrain. They have operations in Arizona, New York and a manufacturing base in Ohio. Now this purchase was made using a combination of cash and $53 million of new debt. However, TerraSmart at the time was reporting revenue of $150 to $155 million for 2020, with an earnings before tax of $26 to $28 million. That makes a $228 million purchase roughly equivalent to 8.5 times earnings, which is a winning ratio compared to what is currently available on the stock market. Factoring in the USA's drive towards solar and green energy supply, especially the current push by Biden's administration, I am confident that with the acquisitions being made, Gibraltar Industries are setting themselves up to be a market leading contender in these markets, and it won't take long to recover the cost of these acquisitions. And that brings me to the agricultural technology segment. This industry has transformed radically over the last few decades, with more advanced machinery being designed to meet the demands of scale, speed and productivity for the market that traditionally farm equipment cannot keep up with. The North American market has grown by roughly 20% in the last year to $6.2 billion and is expected to be worth around $14.3 billion by 2025. That's a growth of over 230% in just four years. Now, Gibraltar isn't alone in the industry and has some serious competition. For the last quarter, Gibraltar reported a 5.1% drop in revenue due to the pandemic, challenging weather, supply chain issues, and the timing of legislative approvals in regard to the cannabis sector, which was affecting their ability to transport across the Canadian borders. Despite this, they have seen a 5% increase in their backlog to $96 million, and they are expecting to see further expansion in 2021 as they implement high-margin projects and improved operations due to their Fermo Energy Systems ownership. I think with Gibraltar's progressive leadership, a flow of quality acquisitions and consistent profits, it makes them a strong contender in the industry and ready to take on the cannabis market. As the cannabis legislation has worked out, the market for legal production is expected to take off, being valued at $54 billion in 2020 and estimated to be worth $106 billion in 2024. Cannabis production requires an incredible amount of electricity to power artificial lighting, fans, dehumidifiers, water pumps, etc. for long operating hours, and they are already supplying products that cannabis growers are going to need as the market grows. Now, Gibraltar estimates the cannabis market to be worth $28 billion to them by 2023. Additionally, by already being diversified and profit-making in their operations, Gibraltar have a huge advantage compared to some other companies who are actually operating at increasing levels of debt. If you take a look at the major players in the cannabis industry, Tilray, Aurora, Village Farms, Grow Generation, a lot of them have seen some great stock growth, peaking at some extraordinary levels but the market isn't holding the stock at these levels and they fell back down. I've taken a closer look at these companies and been reviewing their declared earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. The data shows that there has actually been very little profit growth and half of these have instead been running at a loss. Some have even been taking on huge amounts of debt. I think the cannabis market is still developing and it's yet to become profitable and some companies who rely entirely on the market to change could prove to be dangerous investments. However, if we look at the graph again, the two companies on the left provide more consistent numbers. Innovative industrial properties who provide real estate to the industry and Gibraltar Industries who provide the equipment. Now, their stock prices have had solid returns for the year and they've been better able to hold their position due to being profitable businesses. So I think they are smarter and safe investments if you want to take a step into the industry. Now if we look at IOPR, it's shown some amazing growth over the last year, 
but I think a lot of this has been due to media attention and it's driven the stock up to double the market cap of Gibraltar and it's been trading sideways since. I think it's been overbought and Gibraltar is more fairly valued out of the two due to having a more established and consistently growing profit margins backed up by profits from their renewable energy segments. One slight concern I have though is that 50% of polysilicon production for solar panels comes in Xinjiang, China and there have been reports that this production is coming from slave labour. On the 25th of June, US Customs and Border Protection blocked all imports of silica-based products from China's Hoshin Silicon Indu Industry Company because they discovered forced labor was being used. The degrading relations with China could create a shortage of supply for the materials needed for the increase in demand in solar panel development, along with various other technologies needed for high-tech industry. So I'm going to have to be keeping an eye on this. So that's everything I can say about the company, so now let's break it down to the analytics. Looking at the graph, the company was trading as high as $101 in January, but took a dip to $81 for a week in March on the last earnings report, before shooting back up. The stock currently sits at around $75. However, having dived deeper, we know the company has been making some good moves over the last year with their acquisitions. The earnings per share has been consistently just short of the $2 mark and the company even reported an earnings surprise of 42.4%. To determine if Gibraltar makes a good investment, we need to look at the forward price to earnings ratio because this gives us more information about the growth. Now, Various sources have this at around 18. Now, Gibraltar have reported a 34% growth in the company based on 10% organic and 24% from acquisitions. Their adjusted EPS represents a 33% growth and they're estimating future revenue to be $1.3 to $1.5 billion and future earnings per share is expected to reach $3.3 to $3.47. Now based on these expectations, the current share price of $76 would represent a forward PE of between 21.9 to 23.2 and growth in earnings of around 71%. Now, I think this is more than achievable given the company's strong leadership, the value of their acquisitions and a market moving towards huge growth in the renewable energy and cannabis sectors. Lastly, I've also compared the financials to those from other companies in the cannabis, agricultural and renewable sectors, comparing price to sale, book values, EBITDA to enterprise values, expected growth, target share prices, blah blah blah. I've basically filtered this down for you on this graph. Now, I've used my own price cut targets and those from various stock checking sites to form an average price target and given me my margins of growth. The top three within my profile, based on those values alone, are Gibraltar, Renewable Energy Group and Agco. The reason I'm refining data this way is that there isn't a single equation that tells you whether a company makes a good investment. Instead, by using several of the best credited analytics, I can filter the stocks down to the companies with the healthiest values. It's more of an art than a science, but generally speaking, the more green you see here, the healthier the company is by an analytical standard. We can then back up that research by deep diving the company. IIPR falls short of my margin of safety, so I won't be investing at these levels. Renewable Energy Group specialises in fuels, which I think makes it more of a commodity stock, but you may want to look at it if you're interested in those type of fuels. Agco looks to be a good agricultural stock, but they are more about farming equipment. And this leaves Gibraltar as my best choice for renewable energy, cannabis and ag tech. I've used this data to calculate a number of average projections. I think this graph represents a summary of consensus and a realistic projection of growth of the stock. And I think the estimated earnings are achievable. I also think that these details have been overlooked by the market. I also think the stock is sitting at the bottom of a teacup and could bounce back from a catalyst or where more investors see it as a well-placed and well-priced option into the industry. I'm drawing my fair price at $103, which gives me a good margin and around 35% growth towards my target market price of $139, which I think it could reach by first quarter next year. So that's my findings, but please do your own research. And if you have any thoughts, please comment below, let me know, and also please consider subscribing because I'm planning to do more of these videos in the future.